again, the end of the front nerve, the dendrites, branch that receives the messages, the ag sign is the long nerve fiber coming out of the cell body, and then the myelin sheath or the white fatty cells that encase the axon, and they increase the speed of nerve impulses. There are essentially three steps, if you are, or three parts of sending an error message. Okay, and it's kind of, well, not really. I used an example of like a phone and a telephone or something like that, but I don't think it works quite as well. Give it one of them. So there are three stages to communicating a message. The first is that you have to know, that you have to know that you got a nerve message, and that's called a stimulus. A stimulus is something that starts a nerve impulse. Okay, so let's talk about these. Okay, because we're off to a good start here. What starts a nerve impulse? Well, let's talk about what actually they are, first of all. Okay? Let's start with temperature. That's pretty easy to understand. My question for you is, do you really sense temperature? The answer is yes. You really do have temperature sensors in your skin. Okay, specialized nerves to sense temperature. So that's one. Okay, what about light? Where would you sense light? In your eyes. That's two. Pressure. Where do you sense pressure? Entire body. What other specific place? Very good, Cassie. Ears. Because really, this is just that. Which is kind of strange. Because we hear sound as something different. We hear sound as words and things like that. But really, I'm just making noises and forming things with my lips and tongue and making them into sounds. And it's actually pressure waves hitting your eardrum making it vibrate, and your brain is converting those into impulses, and we have no idea really how. So, sound is actually pressure waves. Okay? A uh, bomb going off is literally what you're hearing is the sound waves hitting the air. What you're hearing. Okay? Lightning cracking and thunder is just the sound waves of the light is the pressure gradient created by lightning cracking through the air. And you hear that it's thunder. So, what about these two? I'm going to relate them. What are you actually smelling and tasting? Ah, chemicals. And it's not only smell and taste that are chemical receptors. I heard somebody mentioning drugs. You guys, right? What are drugs? Chemicals. How do they work? They work in your brain to change how your brain is sensing things because they actually, we'll see this later when we talk about drugs, we'll talk about drugs, we'll talk about how they affect your brain, we're going to talk about how what actually the drug does in your brain. And what it really does a lot of times is copy a chemical that's already there. And so you either have more of it or less of it. Okay? This is how your brain this is stimulation in your brain. So when somebody takes something like Ritalin, right, that's a chemical. How does that, how does it taking a pill make change your brain? Well, it's because your brain is sensing chemicals. That's how it changes your brain. Sugar changes your brain. Caffeine changes your brain. Makes it work a little bit differently. Well, it keeps you awake. Nicotine, all those drugs that are addictive change your brain. Okay, so these are the things that stimulate a nerve. Now, here's an important thing to understand. Where does a nerve feel this again? What part of it? The dendrites. So that means on the end of a nerve, I'm going to erase this a minute. I'm just going to erase all this. So you got temperature, light, pressure, and chemicals. Is there any other one we missed? Before I eliminate it, I might have forgotten one. Every time I leave this blank, I think I forget. I don't think I have. When your nerve is at rest, 
Okay, that means it's not sending a message. Like the nerves on your skin that feel your clothes, they stop sending messages after a while. Now they are again. She thinks about it. Okay, the ones in the back of my hand are not sending a message right now. Not really. Okay, so they're at rest. When they're at rest, the inside of a nerve, the inside of this nerve. I'm going to try to draw a negative sign. Is negatively charged. I'm going to draw this bigger. So that means that there is a overall negative charge inside and outside because there are sodium ions around your nerve is positively charged. Okay, so inside of the nerve is negative, outside of the nerve is positive. There is basically no, there's very little sodium inside of a nerve. So what do we know about particles? Particles are going to want to move in the direction from high concentration to low concentration, right? Sodium would like to go into the nerve cell for two reasons. Number one, there's no sodium inside. And number two, it's a difference in charge. It's a difference in charge. That creates what we call a resting, what's called a resting potential. In other words, there's potential energy there. There's potential energy. This really wants to try to get in, and they're banging on the door, but they can't get in. Yeah. Okay. So, all outside this nerve are these positive sodium ions waiting to get in. And it starts all the way up here at the dendrites. The reason I'm telling you this now is because when we go to our next slide and we talk about stimuli, what happens is, is that for each kind of nerve, let's say a nerve that is sensitive to light, light allows these positive ions to go in by opening channels, what are called gated channels in the nerve cell membrane. So if I redraw this up here, the way it really looks, Okay, the way it really looks there's these little channels that have literally, almost literally, tiny little gates across. And if it's in your eye, those gates flop open when light hits it. If it's in your nose, those gates flop open when certain chemicals hit it. If it's in your finger, those gates flop open when you put pressure on it. Understand the concept so far. So they open, and in goes the sodium ion. I'm going to show you all this. those open, okay, so let's say you, this is a pressure sensitive dendrite and you put pressure right there. That sent that positive ion in. All along the nerve, I'm exaggerating. All along the nerve are more channels. The gates. And in those channels, draw my pluses out here. Those 
those channels are sensitive to change. They're called voltage gated. That means if the pi, if the voltage changes, which voltage is difference in this is people the difference in charge. If the ch if the positives go in, that changes the charge. Change the charge and flip open that gate. Change the charge and flip open that gate. Change the charge and not all at once. That way. So if I change, okay, I put pressure on my finger, boop, that opens the first channel. That changes the charge, which opens all the succeeding channels in a row. It's kind of like starting a dom the domino by pushing the first one. Push the first one, all the rest of them go in order. Now I know. The cool thing about your nervous system, though, is it resets really fast. Like, you can tap your finger and feel it every time. It's not continuous, but you feel it every time. Okay? Every time. That means that not only do they go in really fast, you reset it. Instead of just knocking the dominoes over, they pop back up. Still with me. And that's because, along with these channels, are other ones that reset the charge. And again, I'm going to show you a video of all this to kind of go along with what I'm saying. It's going to be yellow, I guess. I have some drum on the other side, but this idea is essentially the same. I'm going to draw in a different color. As the message passes, as this goes in, as it passes, this channel opens and pumps the positive, actually positive potassium ions out to reset the charge. Sodium ions in, boom, reset the charge of potassium ions out, ripple it down the nerve, and that ripple effect is the message. That's the message. The name of it is actually potential. Action for movement, potential for the change in energy. 